This is part seven of a short crash course series on photo editing so you'll understand how to edit your images for whatever your purpose is. Now, in these examples, we're using GIMP version 2.10, which is free, but a lot of the ideas carry over into Photoshop. Now, it's intended that you watch this series before you take the tutorial videos from wherever you get them on how to use all the little tiny tools or how to do more complicated things because in understanding how the computer thinks and how the image editor thinks, you'll be able to edit your photos awesomely. And those other tutorials on where these tools are and what all the menus have, etc., though you'll follow those much better after you know how the computer is thinking about them. So in this example, I'm going to show you how we made this photo here. Now there's one big difference be between this, this artwork photo here and how it appears on the Instagram page. I manage this page. Here we can see that, that his eye has the, the, the shadow correction that we went through in one of the previous examples. This image doesn't have that correction yet. That's because the image editor on Instagram applied a filter that took care of the shadows for us. So since you've seen this series, you'll understand what Instagram is thinking also. So this doesn't just apply to GIMP or Photoshop. It applies to other image tools, including tools like Instagram. Okay, so I'm going to close this and we're going to dive right in here. Here I've, I've got the original picture that we worked with. Okay, now I've, I, I, I could do some gamma correction. And why not? We already did that before. I'm going to go to colors and I'm going to go to uh, levels. I could bring it down. Mm, that's okay, but the rest of the face looks too smoky and cloudy. So I don't want to use, I decided I don't want to use levels for that. I'll use curves. So I'm, I'm going to take my curves here and I'm just going to grab this lower end and I'm just going to kind of pull it in favor of all these shadows. These indicate shadows on the, on the lower end um, and, and a little bit of brightness up on the brighter end. This, this is not which colors there are, but how many bright and dark colors there are. It's like an attendance sheet. So I've, Pull this over here and now I can see his eye because I removed the shadows. So I'm going to click OK. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I, I want this to be part of text. Now in Photoshop, there's a wonderful tool called a clipping mask. It's very, very useful. GIMP doesn't have it. But by using this example in GIMP, I'm going to show you more about how the computer thinks. So I love the tool in Photoshop. I wish GIMP had it. But this is more about how the computer thinks. So I'm, I'm gonna, I've am i got these letters. It's an SVG file. I created that using Inkscape. These are my letters. It's not a font. I, I designed all these letters. I'm going to drag this in. But one of the first things I'm going to look at, it's going to ask me how big it wants my SVG file to be. Because as we looked at before, SVG files aren't stuck at a specific size. They can zoom in and zoom out and, and, and they, they stay just as beautiful. So I want it to pretty much fill up this whole screen here, but I need to know how big it needs to be. Well, I look up here at my resolution size and I see that it's uh, 1,440 pixels wide. So that's about what I want. I want some space on the side. So I'm, I'm going to make it about uh, 1,400 pixels wide. So I'll, I'll bring it in there like that. So there it is now in the center. So now I've got this here and I suppose I could go here to my moving tool and I, I could I could move it around, move it down here. Well, n uh, now it's off center. I want it perfectly centered right and left. So I'm going to go to my moving tool. And this is the GIMP interface. There's a lot of tools here that are clustered. I'm going to right click and go down to alignment or I could just press Q. They've got the shortcut listed right there. Alignment. And now I'm, I'm, I'm going to select what I want to align and I'm going to, you know, relative to what? How about the image? And I'm going to align it to the center this way. Okay. There we go. So now I've aligned it. I, I could align it to the center vertically, but I don't want to. I want it where I want it. I want it aligned center this way. All right. Okay. So I'm done with that. I, 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 I want to move. I'll right click here. Go back to my move tool. Well, I don't want to look at those letters covering up the picture. I want the picture to only show up in those letters. So rather than using the clipping mask, the awesome clipping mask tool in Photoshop, 
I'm going to show you more about how the computer thinks. I'm going to drag the letters underneath. I don't need to see them, but I need them somewhere. I'm going to make a new layer on top. I'll call it whatever. OK, click OK. There's my new layer. I'm going to use that in a minute. I'm going to right click on this, on, on my letters. It's, it's, uh, it's under there. It's just it's hidden by this top layer. I'm going to right click on my letters layer. And I'm going to click on this wonderful tool called Alpha 2 Selection. Now, what is Alpha? Alpha is the transparency layer. It's the part that you can't see. It's all that's not green in this example right here. The checkered indicates Alpha. It's, it's nothingness inside a picture. So I'm going to take the nothingness called Alpha, which you're going to see all over the place. I think even even on Apple computer software, they talk about alpha. It's the invisible part of the picture or the semi-transparent nature of, of a layer or part of the picture. So I'm going to take all that alpha and I'm going to turn that into my selection. So I'm going to click on this. Look what it did. It selected everything that's alpha. Here, it selected right around those letters. And so now only that part of the photograph is selected. It's, it's a wonderful tool, Alpha to Selection. Now, in Photoshop, there are other tools that, that I think are much better for editing this, but we can see how things work here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on the layer I want to work with. The selection applies to every layer, but it's only working on the layer I've selected, the area I've selected and the layer I have selected. So I've got this right here, and I'm going to press Control-C to copy that one part. Then I'm going to go up to my other layer, I don't have to do this, but to show you what's going on, I'm going to hide these other layers. So I'm up on the top layer. Everything else is hidden. It's there, but it's hidden. And I'm going to press Control V to paste it. Now I've got that floating up on that top layer. Now I'm going to click on my rectangle tool so I can get my little anchor. You see the little anchor in my tool there. Here I could, I, I could move it around, but I don't want to do that. Control Z, undo. I'm going to move off the canvas or off of the selection somewhere. If I got my anchor, I'm going to click to drop it. There it is. Now I could uh, do some other layer to put it a background. So we'll make another layer for, for a background. I'm going to put it underneath. And I'm going to zoom in here. In fact, you probably asked why this isn't full screen. It's because it, we're not dealing with technical image, image components here. Well, I want the background that kind of matches this guy's shirt. And there's his shirt right there. There's a little piece of his shirt. Uh, what if we looked in the rest of the picture? Okay, there's a better part of it. Well, what, what if in this example we wanted to take purple? Let's take the purple in the shirt and celebrate the purple. So I'm going to click my eyedropper tool over here, or I can just press the hot key O. Click eyedropper tool. And I'm going to, I, I don't want to work in this layer. If I work on the nothing layer and I click the eyedropper tool, it'll think it's black. It'll give me only black. Oh, oh no, it is. It is showing me on top. It's showing me whatever I select. Look at that. Well, I'm going to go over to the purple and I'm going to select that. So now I selected purple. In Photoshop, if I was on this layer, I would get nothing but black. But here it's showing me what I see. That's, that's a difference in GIMP, I suppose. So I've, I've got purple here. Well, now I'm going to go to my bucket tool. And then I'm, I'm, now I'm working on the layer I want here. I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to click. And I just made the whole layer purple. Well, look, there I go. Well, now I want to clip this down into a perfect square. So I mean, we're, we're here a little bit with select. And then I'm going to go to my select, I'm going to do rectangle over here. Now my image, oh, you wonder why I didn't have it maximized. My buttons are hiding it. It's 440 wide. So what I've got to do is I've got to get, I've got to get this thing. I've got to make a selected area that's 440 tall. Well, if I look down here at the, at, at the bottom of my select area, as I'm selecting, watch down in this area, you'll see, you'll see the numbers show up. See, it shows there, 1400, see, look right about there. 1400, 14, 20, 30, 40, you get it just right. 
uh, yeah, okay. Now it's 1440 tall. Well, that's not perfectly centered. I'm going to eyeball it and get it about where I'd like it. Now it's too wide on the edges, but that's fine. It's not going to select off of my canvas. So now it's already 1440 wide and I've got a selected area, however wide, it doesn't matter, that's 1440 tall. I'm going to go over here to image and I'm going to do crop to selection. Click it, boom. And now that's the size of my image. That's how more or less I created this image over here. Cheerio.